Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Joe Tophead. In this video, I want to talk about tapioca pudding. No, not the dessert! This tapioca pudding I want to talk about is a Peanuts character from 1986, because this is part of my series of forgotten Peanuts characters. Tapioca Pudding has to be the strangest character to be featured in Peanuts. She first premiered on the strip on September 4th, 1986. Her whole personality is based around the fact that one day her face will be on every product known to man. To every character she meets, she would announce her name as Tapioca Pudding, even if they already knew that. And she would also remind them that her father, Joe Pudding, is in the licensing business. He is the one who gave her the name of Tapioca Pudding because he wants to make a million dollars one day. Yeah, it's exploitive and it sounds really bad, but Tapioca is strangely okay with that. In fact, she is proud of the fact her father gave her the name and wants to make millions of dollars. She annoys the other characters by constantly reminding them of who she is, especially Linus, who she seems to hang out with all the time. With Tapioca Pudding, Charles Schultz seems to be taking a slam on the licensing industry for exploiting characters by slapping their face on every merchandise known to man. Her dessert-based name is obviously a parody of Strawberry Shortcake, who was created back in the 1980s for greeting cards, but was eventually placed on every product you can think of. You see, Tapioca Pudding was a tool for her father to get rich. She had no personality other than the fact that she wants to sell you something. Schultz seems to be saying the same thing about Strawberry Shortcake, that Strawberry Shortcake is a tool for the licensing industry to make millions of dollars, and she has no personality other than the fact she wants to sell you something. Give it to them, Charles Schultz. Give it to those licensing folks who want to slap a character on a... Per Oh, <laughs> let's try this again, folks. Can you believe Tapioca Pudding for her audacity of wanting her face on a lunch box? Imagine that, trying to slap a character's face on a greeting card. Boy, Tapioca Pudding was really annoying. She wanted to slap her face on t-shirts. <clears throat> okay, after reviewing that merchandise of peanuts, I have to ask a rather uncomfortable question being a peanuts fan. Was Tapioca Pudding an example of Charles Schultz's hypocrisy? Tapioca Pudding seems like a character who could have been created by Calvin and Hobbes creator Bill Watterson. You see, Bill Watterson is against merchandising his characters. He has never once, to the best of my knowledge, featured anything he created on coffee mugs or whatever. So, taking a shot at Strawberry Shortcake would line up with his views. Where is Charles Schultz slapped his character's faces on every product you can think of? The criticism Schultz gives to Strawberry Shortcake is one that could be launched at him as well. In fact, it had been. Dating back to when he started placing his characters in Ford Falcon commercials, people had criticized him for featuring his characters in commercials and over time slapping their faces on just about every merchandise. So he's criticizing Strawberry Shortcake for something he did himself. So is he a hypocrite? My initial conclusion was that yeah, Charles Schultz was being a hypocrite. I didn't lose any respect for him, well maybe a little, but I just kind of chalked it up for him getting older and criticizing folks for doing things that he himself had done. Well, I thought this until I started rereading some interviews he did over the years. 
And what I found out was that his views on merchandising weren't as black and white as Bill Watterson's. In fact, on Bill Watterson, he basically said that he didn't understand his anti-merchandise views. When Watterson said that the comic strip industry was becoming too commercial, Charles Schultz replied back that the comic strip industry is in fact a commercial one because the reason why they were created was to sell newspapers. And so it was only natural to feature popular characters from the comic strips on merchandise such as coffee mugs, as well as greeting cards, lunch boxes, and of course, t-shirts. He was by no means opposed to this. Because, well, it helped increase the income of a cartoonist. Quite a bit of his income came from merchandise. But, however, it didn't mean he wanted to slap the, the penis characters on every product that came to his desk. He felt a great responsibility in placing his characters on merchandise. In fact, according to his son, he rejected way more ideas than he accepted when it came to merchandising. Plus, he also felt that a character's popularity should grow organically. They should become popular first and be created as a character. And then, when the said character becomes popular enough, start featuring them on merchandise. That's exactly what he did for Peanuts. He said many times that when he went in to comic strips, he didn't think too much about merchandising. In fact, most of the people came to him rather than him go to these people. What he objected to was characters being created just to sell merchandise. Probably a famous example of this during the 1980s were animated cartoons being made to sell toys. Good examples would be Transformers and G.I. Joe. Schultz would have been opposed to this because he felt that these cartoons should be made first and be beloved before you should even think of merchandising. So it boiled down to integrity and Schultz had a lot of integrity. Let me know in the comments section if any of you guys feel he was in fact being a hypocrite. But give good reasons for it. Don't just say he was a hypocrite. That, that doesn't explain anything. Well, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later.